Coach, the, I know the, the X's and O's might not be the same, but what in the first half, what y'all are trying to do kind of looked a little bit like two years ago on the end in, in of the NIT run, uh, trying to push it on offense a little bit, uh, playing with a broken floor. Is, is there is there some similarities to to that with what y'all have done the last two games and kind of the end of that season? I think it started three games ago, but yes, sir. Um, there's some similarities in what we're trying to do the first six seconds on a miss. Um, yes, sir. I don't honestly, Travis, I'm trying to remember exactly what we were doing at that time, but uh, playing with three ball guards more uh, the last three games has a lot of some of that when, when Q was here and Dre and four. So the pace is a little different. And with in the second half with Solo coming back in the game, I know y'all defensive rebounding went down. How much of that kind of helped y'all get back into the rhythm of what you were trying to do? Well, we, we, I thought, I, I know they made some shots, but in the first half, but <clears throat> we did a lot of good things defensively. Uh, in the first half, arguably the best thing we did was when they missed, we got the rebound. Um, as you mentioned, I, I think we got a turkey the first ATO of the second half. And then I think Bubba told me from that ATO until the last, the, until the last ATO, I think we got three total stops. And I, I thought Solo was tremendous. Um, they're so good. They're so tall. They're so wide. Uh, they're first in the league at the rim. They're second in the league in offensive rebounding. They're third in the league at finishing at the rim. And in that stretch, whatever that would end up being, the 16-minute mark to the four-minute mark, we, we could not stop them either from getting to the rim or, as you said, they were finishing – they were finishing the possession with an offensive rebound put back. And we just, Solo was tremendous on the glass. What has led to this um, recent emergence, for lack of a better word, I guess, of uh, Manny and Solo? Because y'all in the past have relied so heavily maybe on Boots and, uh, and Wade, and these guys lately have been really playing at a high level. Yeah, I've learned so much from all of these guys. I think, um, I know we lost uh, last week here against South Carolina, but in the last seven days, I just think the the connectedness and the tignet, togetherness and the fight, um, the communication, the preparation, all of the things. I know you guys see the games, but they understand. Um, they understand. They have genuine love for one another, and I, I think it's probably the first time in a long time we've had four guys in double figures. And um, Mo's been a big part of it. Uh, Solo, I didn't think Solo was great uh, with the foul trouble at Georgia, but I thought that uh, four wasn't great uh, at Georgia. But again, the it's kind of an intangible competitive advantage the way our guys have continued to fight and scrap and claw and hang in there. How much of, I guess, your style, how, how much has that been kind of dictated with Obiseki's emergence, and then how much has the emergence also been part of the, the faster pace and the three guards and, the, and and playing with that kind of style? Well, we've had more turkeys in the last three games um, than we've had probably in any three-game stretch. Um, we've done a better job guarding the ball. We've done a better job guarding without fouling. Um, Georgia shot six free throws, and Mississippi State shot seven. I think when we can keep the ball in front and we can defend without fouling, now it comes down to can we get a defensive rebound. In the first half, we did a really good job of that. In the second half, not so good. Um, but in many respects, regardless of which person, um, I think they've answered the bell over the last week, and, and that's encouraging. Buzz, when uh, the 23-point lead is dwindling, yeah. uh, 
Are you? What are you seeing? How do you keep your guys? Uh, uh, they were they were engaged. I, we, you know, they kept changing. Uh, they were two two one back to a box and one on four. Uh, then they were in one three one, and then they were in a front court press back to man. And we we were never in a good groove. Uh, credit to coach. I, I think he's one of the best coaches in the country. Um, the, our rhythm was bad. Our execution was bad. Um, and we weren't getting any stops. And so I'm not saying it's right. Um, but some of the confusion that that was causing, I just said, guys, no, no matter what they're doing, we're doing this just so that we're all on the same page because we, we weren't taking predictable shots and we weren't positioning ourselves from predictable shots to get offensive rebounds. And we're very reliant on getting offensive rebounds. And so I'm not saying that that's right. Um, and we'll need to do a better job going forward. We've seen a lot of different things uh, throughout the year, changing things throughout the game, we didn't handle very well in the second half. How much do you feel like, when at the risk of oversimplifying things, do you feel like your guys are confidence shooters, and when you do get some transition buckets and they just see the ball going through the net, that sometimes that can translate to? I don't know what we were. I've kind of quit looking at it, um, but I would say we're for sure south of three hundred and fiftieth um, in three-point field goal percentage. So <laughs> it's like manna from heaven. If we make one, whoever makes it, whatever the tempo is, <laughs> it helps us. And so uh, good shooting is contagious at times. Bad shooting is contagious at times. I think the one thing that's helped us is our ability to continue to get fouled and also convert. Because now, potentially, the, I thought our front court defense, particularly when Jace was in, I thought we did a fantastic job of we can kind of control the tempo. And when you can get fouled and be the first in the bonus and you can make a free throw, now all of a sudden they're facing the front court pressure and as big and tall and wide as they are, at least we're keeping the ball from the basket for, I don't know, maybe five to sec seven seconds longer. And over the course of the game, you know, I, I mentioned it to our guys at halftime. We we, we call a – we call a – yeah. Uh, Brad throws it into me, and you're at the – front of a zone press and I dribble and I see Brent right here. Okay. Well now I got to throw it back to Brad, right? And that pass, if I'm not throwing it straight to him, we call it a lollipop. And so we count lollipops. And I told the guys before the game, I go, we got to get to 22 lollipops. And Jace is <clears throat> highly intelligent, highly competitive. So he's counting it when he's in. And he's making sure I know the count. And, you know, over the course of a game, if you can buy 22 lollipops and that shaves three and a half, four and a half seconds off the front of a possession, if you can do that, that means you have to score. We haven't always done that. You have to make free throws. We haven't always done that. But if you can do that over the course of a 200-minute game, you can shorten the game. Uh, the game was 63 possessions. <clears throat> They're so physical inside. You do want to have some tempo. And we were really good in tempo in the first half. And then I thought in, at times, because we were so relieved and thankful that we were making shots, at times we got a little too carried away. And now if you don't make them, now they're playing in transition and you're not shortening the game, the game's lengthening. And it's a delicate balance of, well, I'm glad that we're making a shot. 
And I thought our, you know, like the the last time I looked, our our metrics offensively in regards to the shot diet were top 30. Well, that's because we don't turn the ball over. It's because of our free throw rate. It's because of our offensive rebounding rate. So all the things that we can control were top 30. Yeah, but we're south of 350 on can you make a shot. But I think it speaks to our guys understand what we're trying to accomplish. But then when you start making some the way we did, sometimes you're like, yeah, let's just let's make up for lost time. And to his question, like in the second half, we missed a couple of bunnies. We missed some of the wide open threes we made in the first half. And I, um, we call it TSM time score momentum guys we got to understand time score momentum i'm not trying to pull you back but we also need to understand where we're at at one point it was a 23 point game like and that's a delicate balance coach what'd you make of the environment just senior night in the last home game of the season yeah i'm probably the worst coach in the country on senior night um you, do you do it before the game? Do you do it after the game and only the real people stay because everybody else is leaving? I don't know what the right thing to do is. Um, I feel very emotional, uh, particularly on guys that I've been with a long time that um, surely we could do more than a jersey and a two and a half minute video montage. But I know that that's what it is. I'm not uh, upset with marketing and all that happened. I just don't think I'm very good. And the flow and the rhythm and the routine of how you warm up and when I talk to them, it's just, I'm just very uh, A to B to C to D. And I think our team is in some ways. And so we kind of talked about that over the last couple of days. Uh, and I thought our team handled it. I thought our team handled it well. Buzz, you allow yourself to uh, think about what, this does for your NCAA tournament resume? No. I know sometimes you think I'm being condescending to you, and I, I honestly, I pray about uh, making sure that my tone of voice is right with you and I say the right things. Uh, we've just been through a lot, and uh, what we need to do is not get worried about what's ahead of us, just try to do what's in front of us. And uh, I've quit looking at all of it. I think sometimes that probably turns my brain into overdrive and I have enough chaos going on. Um, and I've asked the team to do the same. Like, what What is immediately in front of us? I do believe we're still in control and I think that's a good position to be in, but I'm wise enough to understand we're not there. And so we have work to do and what is it that I can do in that work that helps us be the best that we can be. Now that senior night has, has come and, you know, he's played his last home game, just hoping to get your thoughts on Boots' impact not only tonight but on his pro, on this program the last three years. Yeah, I'm sad. Um, I, I texted him real early this morning just so I could get some of that out of my heart. Um and the TV guys were asking me today at shoot around. And, you know, I understand that there needs to be a quote or a sound bite. I think the life change through the experience over the last six years with Boots, uh, nobody could have orchestrated other than somebody not on earth. And um, I will be loyal to him and his family because of their loyalty to me and my family forever. Uh, he was an academic redshirt. He was the first ever academic redshirt in the history of Virginia Tech. He graduated in three years. He was an all league player that played in multiple NCAA tournaments in the ACC. And uh, thus far he hasn't played in multiple NCAA tournaments here, but he's been an all league guy. And um, as I, as I told the team on Monday, and I just mentioned it to the team uh, a bit ago, I would like to win, not for my ego. Um, I would like to win so I can continue to be around you guys.
and specifically boots. Um, that's a long time uh, with a pandemic involved. And um, from Baton Rouge to Blacksburg, you, you might as well have been in China. Um, and then for him to come here amidst all that was going on in the portal and in NIL, and he didn't participate, didn't take another visit. It's just, he's just been the same guy throughout all of the experiences. His character has never changed. And um, I have great love and admiration and respect. Never ask for anything. Dad's never asked for anything. Mom, stepmom, just good people. You know, they feed us the last two years. Like every single person, J-Mo, everybody, they have a gift that they've made with their hands for each person. It just, um, I wish I could be the dad um, that his dad has been to him. And I just, I admire him. All right, that's a wrap. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.